Hello students, welcome to an academy once again. I am Abhishek Datta. I did my graduation from IIT Roorkee and my MBA from IIM Indore. So in the previous video, we have seen a few of the developments which led to the development of the Bohr's model, right? So this video is about the Bohr's model and we'll learn quite a few things about the Bohr's model which is a very scientific model, right? So let's begin this video with this note. Hello students, welcome to an academy once again. This video is about the Bohr's model. So we had completed quite a few developments which led to the development of this Bohr's model. So we'll study about the Bohr's model which was developed by Niels Bohr. I am Abhishek Datta, you already know about me. So let's begin this. We'll be having three topics of discussion for today in this video. Firstly, we'll discuss about the salient features of the Bohr's model, right? And then we'll learn about some of the important aspects of this Bohr's model. What does the Bohr's model imply? And finally, we'll look at some of the drawbacks and why Bohr's model is not sufficient for our understanding, right? So let's quickly begin with the first topic, which is the Bohr's model. This was developed by Mr. Niels Bohr. So in order to explain the stability of atoms, and the discrete spectra emitted by atoms, Niels Bohr in 1913 postulated the following. So if you may remember the previous model, that was the Rutherford model, it had some drawbacks, right? What were the drawbacks guys? If you may recall, the first drawback was that according to Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism, he said the electron should spiral inside the nucleus and hence the Rutherford model was not stable. So stability of atoms was something which was very confusing for the scientists right and Niels Bohr answered this question very well in this model. Another drawback of the Rutherford model was the discrete spectra which was observed right and uh, Niels Bohr again he answered this question very uh, uh, nicely in this model of his right. So let us look how did he do this. So he postulated a few things. What is the first thing he said? He said that the electron in an atom, it can revolve around the nucleus only in certain allowed circular orbits, not any random orbits, but only in certain allowed circular orbits without losing any energy, right? As long as the electron is moving in a particular orbit, it would stay at the same orbit without absorbing or radiating any energy, without transforming its energy level. So this was the point number one. The next point which he said was that the electron can jump from one of the allowed orbits to another and thereby gain or lose the energy equivalent to the difference of the two involved orbit. So he said that this electron which was previously rotating in its own orbit without influence of any external energy, this orbit can jump from one of the allowed orbits to another, right? So it can change its uh, orbit number from n equals to 1 say suppose to n equals to 3. It can change its orbit number and thereby it can gain or lose the energy which is equivalent to the difference in the energy of the two involved orbits, right? This is the second thing which he said. The third thing which he said is known by the rule which is the Bohr's frequency rule, guys. So what is this rule? The frequency of radiation absorbed or emitted when this transition, so this transition we are talking about when the electron is changing its number uh, orbit number from say suppose n equals to 1 to n equals to 3 it's going at a higher uh, orbit number and gaining energy or uh, vice versa it can go from n equals to 3 to n equals to 1 which is it is uh, losing energy right so whenever these sort of uh, change in orbits are happening there is a radiation which is forming right it can be an absorption of the radiation or emission of the radiation and the frequency of this radiation absorbed or emitted when transition occurs between the two stationary states that differ in energy by delta E is given by this equation. So we said that energy is equal to H into the frequency. This is we had already studied right H equals uh, H into frequency that is the energy and over here the uh, frequency mu over here is the frequency of the radiation which is absorbed or emitted. It is nothing but the difference in energy levels of the two orbits. What are the energy levels guys? It is E2 and E1. So if E2 is at, a, is at a higher state, higher orbit number, we give that E2 and E1 similarly will be at n equals to 1 say suppose. So 
H into mu equals to the difference in the energy levels of the two orbits, guys. And this is what Mr. Niels Bohr said. So H into mu equals to E2 minus E1. He said one more thing, and this thing is about the angular momentum, guys. So what is angular momentum? Angular momentum of an electron which is moving in a circular orbit is given by m into v into r, right? So this is the formula. You can uh, visit your physics chapters to find out how is this derived. Okay, so angular momentum of an electron in a given stationary state can be the can be given by this equation. So he derived this equation now, and this is the angular momentum that is nothing but equal to a multiple of h by 2 pi, right? So h is the constant which I had already studied over here, and pi is again a constant. Hence this number is a constant. He said that the angular momentum of any electron which is rotating around a nucleus it can have in uh, a multi it can be only a multiple of this constant over here thus an electron can move in only those orbits for which its angular momentum is integral multiple of this constant that is why only certain fixed orbits are allowed so this is the reason he said that there are only certain fixed orbits as as we said in the first postulate over here only certain allowed circular orbits are allowed without losing any energy right guys so this is how he derived he gave us this equation and he said that the angular momentum of an electron which is equal to m into v into r here m is the mass of the electron v is the velocity of the electron and r is the radii at which the electron is rotating away from the nuclei okay so this is the angular momentum and it is an integral multiple of this constant h upon 2 pi h is the planck's constant over here so these are the four postulates which bohr said and this is how he defined his model right let us look at some important aspects of this bohr's model now guys so what are some important aspects the first thing is that as we said the stationary states of an electron are numbered from n equals to 1 to uh, infinity you can have lot of different number of orbits and these integral numbers are known as principal quantum numbers guys okay so these are known by the name principal quantum numbers the second thing is that he gave us an equation wherein we can find out the radii of the stationary states right so this is the equation you need to remember this equation guys it's very important so what is the radii at which the electron is moving guys it is given by the expression rn and that is nothing equal to in the numerator side we have n square into a not and in the denominator we have the atomic number z so n over here is the orbit number say suppose n equals to 1 2 3 and so on a not is a constant which is 52.9 picometers right guys and finally in the denominator we have the atomic number over here so this is an expression from where we can find out the radii at which the electron is moving next we have an expression for the energy of the electron in the stationary state guys so this equation again will give us the energy of the electron in the stationary state depending on what is the atomic number and what is the orbit number so the atomic number is again given by z which is on the numerator as z square in the denominator we have n square which is the orbit number and over here we have minus rh rh is again a constant which is these many joules 2.18 into 10 to the power minus 18 joules so rh is a constant you just need to know what is the orbit number of the electron and the atomic number of the atom and you will find out the energy of the electron right in the stationary state guys and if you may wonder why is this negative sign over here so this negative sign means that the energy of the electron for which this expression is given this energy of the electron in the atom is lower than the energy of a free electron at rest so what is happening with a free electron say suppose there is a free electron which is not attached to any atom it is moving around randomly so it has energy level as 0 and you can find out the energy level if you substitute the value of n to be infinity over here so you can assume that the electron is at an infinite distance from the nuclei and hence n is equals to infinity because the orbit number will be infinite in this case and if you substitute n equals to infinity in this equation you will arrive that energy level is 0 hence whenever an electron is trying to come nearer and nearer to an nuclei it will attain a more stable state than had it been a free float free floating electron okay guys so this is the reason why we have a negative sign over here it means that the energy of the electron in the atom is lower than the energy of a free electron 
okay guys so let's move on now this is the final section of the video now that we have described what are the aspects of the Bohr's model let us look at some of the drawbacks now so Bohr's model was a good thing right Bohr's model overcame a couple of uh, drawbacks which Rutherford's model had so Bohr's model of the hydrogen atom was no doubt an improvement over the Rutherford's nuclear model right guys as it could account for the stability of the line spectra of the hydrogen it could explain the discrete spectra which was shown by hydrogen as well as hydrogen like ions what do you mean by hydrogen like ions for example he plus li2 plus and beryllium 3 plus and so on they contain only one electron around the nuclei the nuclei can have one two or more than two charge right positive charge but there should be only one electron so these are known as hydrogen like ions because hydrogen atom has only one electron around a nuclei right guys so Bohr's model was very good in explaining all of the things which were happening only in hydrogen and the hydrogen like ions so uh, let us look at some drawbacks now Bohr's model was too simple to account for the falling points the first point is that the model is unable to explain the spectrum of atoms other than that of hydrogen as we said over here the Bohr's model could explain the spectra of the hydrogen model hydrogen atom only and not any other atoms so if the atom got more complex a different model uh, was required now the second point is that it could not explain the ability of atoms to form molecules by chemical bonds so the formation of chemical bonds that was very dicey in Bohr's model and Bohr's model could not explain this phenomena fully thirdly we can see that the according to Bohr's model the circular orbits of the electrons are planar he said that the electrons will move around the uh, move around the nuclei in a very circular orbit and this is a plane this circular orbit will lie on a plane but in real life this is not true as the electrons move around the nuclei in 3d space so electrons don't move around the nuclei in a 2d space but in a 3d space right so Bohr's model couldn't uh, answer this question how it was able to move in a 3d state finally the last drawback was that the Bohr's theory was also unable to explain the splitting of the spectral lines in the presence of magnetic field so uh, there were some uh, different phenomena happening in the presence of magnetic field for example Zeeman effect or in the presence of an electric field in the Stark effect there was splitting of spectral lines you learn about this later in the later videos guys and this was something which the Bohr's model couldn't answer again so these were some of the drawbacks guys we have reached at the end of the video let's summarize quickly what all we learned firstly we learned about the Bohr's frequency rule wherein we said that the energy difference is equal to the uh, h into mu of the radiation which is absorbed or emitted here mu is the frequency of the radiation okay guys then we said angular momentum of an electron which is given by mvr it can take only on integral multiples of this constant h upon 2 pi right guys this was the angular momentum thirdly we also studied how to calculate the radii of any uh, electron right so a radii of any uh, n n is the orbit number over here so it is given by n square into a naught by z here a naught is a constant which is 52.9 picometers and z is the atomic number and n is the number orbit number okay guys and finally we also learned about how to calculate the energy level of an electron given its atomic number as well as the orbit number here rh is again a constant and we also said why is this a negative number over here and why not it's a positive we also answered that question and finally we also looked four of the drawbacks of the Bohr's model so because of this Bohr's model a uh, different model was needed now okay so the different model which was needed was the quantum model of an atom we'll study about that model in the next video guys thank you for listening to me in this video and if you uh, enjoy watching my videos, you can always follow me over here and ask me any doubts if you have in the comment section. Thank you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.